Hi there. This video is explaining how surgeons approach rectal cancer. Rectal cancer treatment is very different from colon cancer. I have another video explaining colon cancer surgery that you might want to check out. Let's review the anatomy of the intestinal tract. When you eat food, it goes through the esophagus and into the stomach, then into the small intestine for many feet. Then the small intestine empties into the colon in the right lower abdomen. The colon runs up the right side of the abdomen, across the top, then down the left side of the abdomen. The last bit of colon snakes around here and is called the sigmoid colon. The turn of the colon in the right upper abdomen by the liver is called the hepatic flexure, and the turn in the left upper abdomen near the spleen is called the splenic flexure. The abdominal organs are the colon and are contained within the sac of the abdomen called the peritoneal sac. The colon then exits the abdominal sac and enters the soft tissue of the pelvis. Once the colon leaves the sac of the abdominal organs, it becomes surrounded by fat and eventually the muscles that control the anal canal. Once it exits the peritoneal sac and is surrounded by fat, this is then considered rectum. The rectum is usually around 15 centimeters from the anal opening, although the distance varies on how tall a person is. The rectum is split into the upper rectum, which is 10 to 15 centimeters from the anal opening, the middle rectum, which is five to 10 centimeters from the anal opening, and the lower rectum, which is the lowest part just above the anus. Rectal cancer usually presents with blood in the stool that is bright red since it is so close to the anus. Sometimes people have a hard time passing the stool or the stool is very thin because the lumen is narrow from the cancer. A doctor usually confirms the diagnosis of rectal cancer by doing a colonoscopy with a camera and taking a biopsy of the mass. Almost all rectal cancer is the type called adenocarcinoma. Once you are diagnosed with rectal cancer, we usually do a CT scan of the chest and the belly to be sure the cancer has not spread. Common places to spread are the lungs and the liver. We also usually like to do specific pictures of the rectum with either an MRI, which is a tube you lay in for 15 or 30 minutes, or sometimes an ultrasound, which is done directly through the inside of the rectum. The surgery for rectal cancer is the most complicated of the colon and rectal cancer surgeries. This is because you have to remove the rectum from the fat and organs in the pelvis. The other organs such as the uterus and vagina in women, or the bladder and the prostate in men, are very close to the rectum. The ureter tubes drain urine from the kidney to the bladder, and these are also close to the end of the colon and the rectum. For rectal cancer surgery, we want to remove at least 12 lymph nodes. Rectal cancer drains to lymph nodes all the way up by the sigmoid colon. The lymph nodes are intertwined with the blood vessels supplying the rectum and lower sigmoid colon. In order to remove the 12 lymph nodes, we usually have to remove about one foot or more of the end of the sigmoid and rectum to at least two centimeters below the rectal cancer. In order for the remaining colon to reach into the pelvis to reconnect to the remaining rectum, we have to release attachments at the splenic flexure and the left descending colon. The colon is reattached to the stump of rectum left with either a stapling device or by sewing by hand. This surgery is called a low anterior resection or abbreviated as LAR. Lastly, if the patient has had radiation before surgery, this can make healing worse. So we usually do not trust the reconnection of the colon and the rectum not to leak as it is healing. Commonly, after radiation for rectal cancer, when we remove the rectum and reconnect the colon to the remaining stump of rectum, we recommend diverting stool away from the colon while it is healing. This is done with a loop of small bowel turned into an ostomy called a loop ileostomy. The package surgery is LAR with diverting ileostomy. The stool comes out of the end of the small intestine into a bag. After several weeks or months, a surgery can be done to reconnect the small intestine and stool will go back through the colon and out from the now healed, reconnected colon and rectum. We wait a minimum of several weeks for two reasons. One is to allow time for the reconnected colon and rectum to heal and also to allow the scar tissue around the ileostomy to soften up. For large rectal cancer or a rectal cancer that is very close to the anus, Sometimes a surgeon cannot reconnect the colon to any rectum that is left. If this is the case, then we may have to remove the entire rectum along with the anus and sew the space where the anus was shut completely. 
This obviously requires a colostomy, which is brought up to the skin from the end of the remaining colon, and this is a permanent colostomy for the rest of your life. This surgery is called an abdominoperineal resection, abbreviated as APR. We try not to have to do this surgery, and if we can get even one or two centimeters below a rectal cancer and leave enough anal muscles to allow for continence of stool, we will try to avoid the APR surgery and do the LAR plus minus ileostomy surgery. Okay, let's talk about treatments other than surgery because these are very important in rectal cancer. Adenocarcinoma of the colon is usually removed with surgery, then chemotherapy is given if needed. Radiation is rarely used in colon cancer. One major difference between colon and rectal cancer is that rectal cancer frequently uses radiation. Let's magnify a portion of the rectum. The wall of the rectum has layers, and the middle layer is muscle. For early rectal cancer that has not invaded through the muscle layer in the wall, you may just have surgery and not get any chemotherapy or radiation. But if the cancer is growing deep into the wall of the rectum through this muscle layer, or if it looks like it's already in lymph nodes on x-rays, then we will commonly use radiation before surgery. Radiation helps shrink the tumor, making surgery easier, and it can decrease the regrowth rate of the tumor. If you are getting radiation for rectal cancer, you will frequently be given a very light version of chemotherapy that makes the radiation work better. True chemotherapy, with multiple types of chemotherapy at once, is not given at the same time as radiation as this can cause too many side effects. Radiation with light chemo lasts five to six weeks. After radiation, we typically do surgery next. Then chemotherapy, if needed, comes last. So a quick recap, early rectal cancer not growing through the muscle of the wall of the rectum gets surgery and no other treatment. Deeper rectal cancer growing through a muscle layer or into lymph nodes gets radiation with light chemotherapy then surgery, then chemotherapy after. Sometimes if a cancer is very small and early and has not grown into the wall of the muscle of the rectum and is in the lower third of the rectum, we may be able to remove it from the anal opening just by taking out a part of the wall of the rectum and stitching it shut. This is called a transanal excision. This is only for very small, very early rectal cancer it is sparingly used since we cannot check lymph nodes with this technique. Cancer of the anal canal itself is treated differently. The lining of the colon and the rectum makes adenocarcinoma type of cancer. The lining of the anal canal is a different type of cell and it makes squamous cell cancer. Anal canal cancer is usually treated with chemotherapy and radiation and usually does not need surgery. I hope this helps. Remember to talk to your doctor about screening for colon and rectal cancer, and don't forget to check out my other videos on my channel that may help you. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything new. Take care.